Hello and welcome. You're watching the Buck Stops here, and I'm Barkha Dat. The big political story breaking at this hour is now the open war in the Parivar. Something that, frankly, was expected after the BJP's defeat in Bihar. Already, you had seen Shatrughan Sinha, among others, within Bihar. objecting to how the campaign had been managed and now the old guard the old guard that has been sidelined by narendra modi and amit shah but perhaps biding its time and waiting for a moment to strike back led by lk advani but also endorsed by yashwant sinha by murli manohar joshi by shanta kumar these four veterans of the bjp now openly revolting against the narendra modi's styled bjp in fact if you go through the statement that the four leaders have issued you can clearly see a pre modi bjp and a post modi bjp let's take you through the main points of the statement these four leaders saying that the results of bihar and the defeat for the bjp in bihar clearly show that no lessons have been learned by the party from the fiasco in delhi fiasco is the word they use then clearly wanting accountability to be fixed and clearly targeting the bjp president amit shah without taking his name the statement says to say that everyone is responsible for the defeat in bihar is to actually say no one is held responsible at all and these are the strongest words that come next the principal reason for the bihar defeat is the way that the party has been emasculated in the last year the last year clearly a reference uh, to the time that amit shah and narendra modi have consolidated their hold over the party and not just the government and of course also referring to the leaders who are firmly in the modi camp so these four veterans saying that the party has been emasculated in the last year and that is the reason the unilateralism of leadership is the reason that the party has had to face the defeat it has had to uh, in bihar also the statement calling for a thorough review of the reasons for the defeat and why the consensual character of the party has been destroyed so again and again the statement underlining that the way the bjp is being run right now is not taking other leaders along is 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 is, is almost a one man or a two man show uh, clearly uh, alluding to narendra modi and amit shah prime minister modi and amit shah the bjp party president and then finally the kicker in the tail the review of the bihar defeat cannot be done by the very persons who manage the election now what significant is that not a single bjp spokesperson is ready to respond to the statement what's also ironic is that the bihar results came out on the day that it was lk advani's birthday and if in fact if you bring up those pictures the optics of those pictures prime minister modi actually went to meet uh, with uh, uh, with lk advani on that day but that was of course before uh, those results were known and we'll show you the pictures uh, in just a moment uh, from now the bjp refusing to react one other important point is according to our sources arun shori who has been lashing out to the prime minister's uh, leadership style uh, for the last few months was also <coughs> was also present at this meeting and was also involved in helping them draft uh, this statement the leaders have decided individually not to speak on record just as yet because they do not want to contradict each other across different television channels however i spoke to three of the four leaders who've written this statement and one of them i i deliberately am not taking the name one of them said to me we have built this party and we will not stay ba uh, sit back and watch it being destroyed we are the ones who built this party from scratch and our statement is based on the feedback of not just party workers but from common citizens and what we are saying does not just reflect the four of us and what we think but it reflects the opinion of many other people in the party who at this moment for their own compulsions cannot come out openly now shekhar gupta is with us ashok malik is also with us uh, let me get first responses from you shekhar in some ways not surprising anyone who follows politics knows that the bihar defeat created a space for those who do not like narendra modi and amit shah who feel marginalized to speak but the statement is strong the statement is not a wishy washy statement it uses words like emasculated in the last year it clearly targets amit shah even more than narendra modi it speaks about a unilateralism of leadership it says that the consensual nature of the bjp has been destroyed well uh, first of all i think uh, i've seen it's i've seen it said somewhere that this has happened over the last 24 hours that's not true these knives have been sharpened since Delhi? may may of 2014 yeah delhi gave the first op opportunity, opportunity but delhi yeah. was a small state it yeah. was also too soon and frankly in maharashtra uh, bjp just got away with it uh, i would say by the skin of its teeth because if its seats were 20 less and 
and Shiv Sena had got a larger, a greater uh, yeah. uh, bargaining uh, uh, capacity, uh, crisis would have come up then. So they've been waiting, and I think I think Bihar result is now a turning point in the history of the BJP. The question then becomes, Shekhar, not the origin the when the process started. The timing? The timing is strategic and tactical because, you know, it's Diwali Eve, Mr. Modi is headed for London. Uh, the, uh, the, the wounds of uh, Bihar defeat are still open. Many Bihar veterans are also frothing, yeah. right? This is when uh, Mr. Amit Shah and, and Prime Minister Modi would have liked to expel Shatrughan Sinha and R.K. Singh. Now everything is thrown into air because these are, you may call them Mark Darshak Mandal, but they are very experienced. Hindi mein bolte ghaag hain. Hmm. These are not, uh, these are not Kalka Bachas. Hmm. So they know how to choose their timing. They know how to, uh, what to say and when. They've been seething and they've chosen the right moment now. And you know, uh, more voices are rising in chorus. There's a member of parliament from Bihar, Bhola Singh. Uh, he, he, he has said that uh, the people who create, is almost echoing what one of them told me, that who has party this party, now they are going to finish it. Se bacha rahe hai. But the point you make about the timing is interesting. Ashok, uh, let me get your perspective. There has been a tendency to actually uh, be, be dismissive about the Advani faction, as it were. Uh, many people in the BJP believe that this was a section of the party that was part its prime. I think two consecutive electoral defeats have given uh, not just the opportunity for a kind of resurrection of these leaders uh, because they had been clearly marginalized, but also given them an opportunity to front the anger for other people who are active in the BJP right now, don't particularly like the, uh, the Amit Shah, uh, Narendra Modi leadership style, but are unable to come out in public. I mean, we know this. We meet these leaders. I meet them. And, and, and so many of them were actually happy at the BJP defeat in Bihar. See, Barka, I uh, completely agree with you that uh, the Bihar defeat has been a, a, a mortal, not a, a blow for uh, the current BJP leadership. And uh, certainly, I agree with the letter insofar as it demands a, a, an inquiry into the, the reasons for the defeat uh, and uh, a dispassionate assessment of where the party went wrong. Uh, where I disagree with you is uh, in the use of the word resurrection. Uh, whatever else you may say about Advani, Yashwan Sinha, Arun Shori, uh, who I don't think is in the party anyway, and Muli Manohar Joshi. No, Shori's name, Ashok, I just party. want to clarify. I, I just that. want to clarify. In fact, uh, I, just, I just want to clarify, Shori's name is not on the statement. I just happen to know that he was part of the process uh, of okay, drafting okay, it. He is not on the statement, yeah. Okay, fair enough. These four aren't the future of the party in any way, and people within the party realize that. Uh, yes, there may be a factional war on uh, in the build-up to uh, the decision on Amit Shah's uh, uh, presidency being renewed or not being renewed at the end of this year. Uh, and this is probably the, the uh, beginning of that process. But I don't think anyone would seriously want to uh, get these three or four gentlemen back into uh, the helm in the BJP because they are clearly yesterday's people. Uh, Bulli Mano Joshi would not have won in Kanpur without Amit Shah practically running his campaign for him. Let's not run away from that. So uh, let's not lose perspective. Uh, the Amit Shah Modi camp has also, or duo, has also won a lot of elections for the BJP in the past year, which, which these four gentlemen had not. Yes, Bihar is a terrible defeat. Big mistakes were made. The way the party is being run probably needs uh, a cost correction. I'm not denying that. But, Ashok, but uh, let us not Ashok. pretend that there's some sort of a rebellion which, uh, led by these four which will succeed. Yeah. Ashok, the, uh, you know, you say that yesterday's people, I would make the argument that they are probably fronting the anger of some people who belong to today's BJP as well, that there are party leaders, and you know who they are as well as I do, who when they meet you in private will say, yes, this defeat serves them right. No, I, I get what you mean, and uh, as I said, the target is not Narendra Modi because he's, he's you know he's the prime minister. The target is probably Amit Shah. Mm. The attempt is probably to get the party presidency uh, out of uh, the hands of somebody who's seen as very close to Modi. It may well succeed. We don't know, uh, but I don't think uh, Mr. Modi's stamp on the BJP and his his role in getting the BJP as far it, as it has come since 2014, despite the bad defeat in Bihar, can really be discounted and forgotten. It gives him a certain uh, strength in the BJP, which we should not underestimate, despite the, these four gentlemen.
Okay, I'll get I'll get a response to uh, to that from Shekhar. But Bhola Singh, member of Parliament from Bihar, it's important to hear these voices on the ground. Also, we don't know them nationally, but this is the simmering anger uh, in the state unit of of the BJP in Bihar. This is what he had to say. भाजपा के अंदर ऐसे नेताओं का प्रवेश हो गया है जिसका जनता से राजनीतिक दिशा दशा से कोई संबंध नहीं है इसलिए आज जो कुछ भी मैंने कहा है आज उनके द्वारा उसका समर्थन हो रहा है जो पार्टी के जन्मदाता है जो पार्टी के पोषक हैं और जो पार्टी के इस अवनति के लिए पीड़ित हैं ये हमारे हमारी सारी बातों का जो प्रश्न हमने उठाए इन तमाम वरिष्ठ नेताओं ने भी उसी प्रश्न को उठाया है और एक तरह से हमारे बयान को ही उन्होंने आशीर्वाद दिया है उन्होंने उसकी शुभकामना की है और इस दीपावली की रात्रि में दीपावली के एक दिन पहले ये बयान आत्मा के दीप को जलाने जैसा है Shekhar, do you agree with Ashok that these are yesterday's people, and therefore there is an overestimation of their influence to change the turn of events within the BJP? That well, this is not as if BJP is imploding, because in his mind, these are people whom the media will give attention to, but not the party worker. These are yesterday's people who are relevant today. They may not matter for tomorrow, but hmm. they are relevant today, because they haven't been yesterday's people for that long. I think the problem with the BJP is the challenge with the BJP is it's not like the Congress. Congress, somebody becomes yesterday's people, you send them to states as governors. BJP is sent to the states people who are in their 90s almost, right, and who are nobodies. In fact, most of the governors are people uh, whose names I have to Google uh, yeah. to figure out who they are. So these are not people who are already <laughs> consigned to Raj Bhavans. They are people who have voices. Mr. Advani has a strong voice. He's Mr. Advani is the one. Who played a key role in rebuilding the BJP after it was reduced to two? He is the last of the representatives of the great Vajpayee generation. Mr. Vajpayee doesn't speak anymore, so he's seen to speak on his behalf. He's always been close to the RSS. Look, all that is not important. It's not as if Mr. Advani, who just turned 88 uh, yeah. two days back, on the day of the Bihar result, you know, on the day of the Bihar results uh, two days back, it's not as if he will now. There will there will be a chance that he comes in as prime minister or a deputy prime minister or party president, but these people have moral authority. Uh, they have been ignored, of course. They they, they are they are, they are feeling uh, they are feeling slighted. They could have been handled better, but when they speak like this in this environment, they will have moral authority. I think they will raise some relevant points. Moral authority for whom? For the entire party and the RSS. You know, so see, BJP has not been BJP. See. If you try to change the essential nature of the BJP, what is the BJP? One internally, it's a much more democratic party than the than, Congress. And then say the Congress, or in fact any other major uh, major mm. party in the country, except maybe uh, maybe CPM, right? Uh, or maybe lately not so. But second, uh, it is also a party which has a church. From where orders come, in fact, Nagpur is the BJP's ten janpur tabernacle. I've been saying it for many years. In fact, last time I said this in an article, I got a protest from Mr. Advani saying that this is not true, but it 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 is true. So, when somebody tries to take over the party, hmm. as Mr. Modi and Mr. Amit Shah did, and to change its essential character, then there is an immune reaction. So you agree? You comes, agree that comes, they try to change the character? Yes, there is there is an immune re reaction which comes not just from old people but also from okay, the RSS. Okay, I've got Babul Supriyo on the line. From, also from the RSS. I've got Babul Supriyo, Minister in the Government, on the line. Uh, Babul Supriyo, how do you see these developments as a BJP minister? Well, uh, you know, as a BJP minister, if you ask me, Barka, then my answer will be no comments. But as someone <laughs> who uh, Who is absolutely new in the uh, party, just a uh, year uh, old, year and a half old. I think that uh, obviously, when a when a, it's very much like a football team. You know, when some a, a big team loses, there are going to be several opinions. Every opinion needs to be respected. But I would still say that uh, there is a one term in football that they say that there is a lot of dressing room talk that should not probably come out in the open. And uh, if 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 the uh, If uh, people like Shatrughan Sinha or others who have said things in public, if they are not being uh, not being liked, or if they are 
being uh, asked by the veterans in the party not to speak in public about what they need to speak in the closed doors of our discussion in the party especially in case of a loss like this i think the same rule probably applies to all the seniors as well i think from uh, today's brigade or uh, in the party i think uh, certain changes uh, certain changes uh, were needed to be brought in the political uh, or political manner in which uh, the politics politics of the country i think modi ji did that there is obviously a, no one no political party goes to vote to lose and therefore there must be uh, you know discussions and what went wrong that kind of things that needs to be discussed within the party but probably uh, statements like these are important coming from uh, important people like this but it probably hurts a, a person who loves bjp and don't want to see this happening at a time when we need to probably sit together and show a united face that's that's what i feel as a as a fan of bjp not really as a bjp minister because as a bjp minister i need to just not say anything and stay away because as you said as i heard that all these spokespersons are not available to speak therefore probably i come in forward as a person who loves modi ji and who loves to see the country go ahead because there is no questioning as uh, my last invite that this it goes beyond saying if you're talking about uh, people on the street or the common people then ask them everyone thinks this yes we probably have played it wrong in bihar and lost it to lalu prasad jadhav but lalu prasad jadhav's winning will definitely take bjp 10 years backward it cannot take it forward Uh, Babul Supriyo, I'm glad that you've actually been among the few BJP leaders to come out and speak about this. But you know, you said there should be dressing room, locker room conversations. Should that should not get out? But what one of these very senior leaders told me was that we are the people who built the party, and we cannot see it being destroyed. And they are saying that the party had a much more consensual nature, and now it's been replaced by a new kind of politics that is very much a one man or a two man show. So how do you respond to that criticism? Very fine, very simply, what you're saying is again. dressing room uh, talk this can be this can be talked inside the uh, bjp headquarters why 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 would anyone i am i am when i say anyone i am talking about everyone who spoke out of turn i think that anyone especially we need blessings uh, from the veterans or blessings from the uh, courage from the from the veterans or people that we have always looked up to blessings and not probably a scold at this point of time if i talk about you know at home when you do a bad result you probably want your father to sit down and even if he knows that your son played more cricket than study you would probably put a hand by your back and not scold you at that point of time that's probably what i feel as a complete youngster in the party youngster in a sense in terms of experience but i i think that arun shauri has been speaking what he has been speaking for a very long time the same appears with shanta kumar ji as well uh, i see from outside and i think that they have not i completely believe, uh, agree with shekhar ji when he says that this is not something that has developed in the last 24 hours this is something that has been happening since may to 2014 so i would request everyone associated with bjp to to take a loss with the same amount of vigor as they have taken the the uh, the victories when they have come you know that they have come with the leadership of modi ji there is no denying the fact that 2014 may wouldn't have been as glorified as it is or still remains without the the leadership of modi ji Uh, i mean i i completely stand by that and i think the country will go for with his uh, uh, leadership but any leadership as in a cricket field or a football field always needs some kind of uh, you know uh, discussion discussion that you cannot deny uh, but but i think that everyone needs to be a little more patient at this point of time Uh, uh, Babul, requesting you to stay on with us since you have been a good sport enough to take part in the show. I'm sure you'd want to react to what some of the others uh, also say. Uh, but before I go to Shekhar and Ashok, Rahul Shivastav, my colleague, is right outside Murli Manohar Joshi's residence. Uh, Murli Manohar Joshi's house is where the statement was drafted. Uh, our sources confirming to us that Arun Shori was present at the meeting and helped in the drafting of this. Uh, Rahul, uh, one of these four leaders said, "We built the party. We won't see it being destroyed." Is the target Amit Shah? Is the target the prime? minister and do you agree with the shock that these are yesterday's people or are they picking up traction from other people in the bjp who cannot speak publicly right now but a one uh, there is generally a talk going around that this was all of a sudden uh, what my sources have told me very clearly that the rss sense something like this is going to happen it had information and that is why krishan gopal who is the rss pointsman for bjp did a round of meetings with two elders we don't have the clear names and sushma swaraj 
who is seen close to these elders over the last few years and this meeting took these meetings took place yesterday means the rss was trying to ensure that there is a sense of silence and there is no such open rebellion as far as the elders and those who have been sidelined over the last one and a half years by the rise of abhish shah and uh, narend modi duo what it has done as both shekhar and ashok are saying somewhere the fact remains that these are relevant leaders primarily now more because if there were smaller dissents by shatrughan sinha mr hukumdev narayan yadav and others by dissenting at this point and in this public manner by issuing a statement raising questions of accountability what they have done is one they will encourage others uh, other leaders who have been unhappy over the last one and a half years to rise and uh, also those it will protect these statement will protect those who have already made the statements because if the bjp chases those smaller leaders for discipline and in discipline and other issues then it has to also act against these leaders so somehow by coming out in open these tall leaders have created a shield a protective shield around these uh, around those who have been dissenting means dissent now has a strong protection of these leaders the bjp will have to act against these also and that means we will see more dissent coming in the few next few days and that's what is the sense of worry bjp leaders are right now saying we will like to ignore this statement we will not get into a debate so that it gets too prolonged but the fact remains that this will definitely encourage those who have been sidelined those who have been ignored and those who agree that the power center in the bjp or the democratic setup within the bjp has totally been altered and the power is now in the hands of a very few leaders uh, rahul you make a very interesting point that this could be a trigger effect that this could actually maybe embolden others to say what these people have said i i just want to confirm one thing uh, do we have any more details on who else might have been present at this meeting there are some unconfirmed reports uh, and i'm saying again and again unconfirmed that govind acharya an old ideologue of the bjp was also involved in this have you heard anything like that but we are also hearing but what we were well, usually the best confirmation on uh, the spots where the action is happening is when the car of a visiting person who was sitting in a meeting is uh, is going out we have not seen his vehicle emerge from the meeting till now so one cannot really confirm whether he was 100% inside the meeting or not but if you see the suspects if you see the players who are ever inside the meeting barka if you recall in 2009 you broke that story when yashwant sinha wrote a letter against mr lk adwani seeking the same very question that power is now centered in the hands of a very few people and there is no democratic setup left within the party and introspection and cross uh, course change should not be left in the hands of those who have lost the elections perhaps life has turned a full cycle for all those leaders who were against each other well that's happened to a lot of them right rahul i mean there was lk advani opposed to nitin gadkari there was nitin gadkari opposed to narendra modi there was lk advani who was once the guru of narendra modi in one goa conclave he protected mr modi against vajpayee's uh, 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 sort of separate feeling after gujarat of 2002 at another he didn't show up because he wanted uh, mr modi to not be the prime ministerial candidate so multiple ironies here babul supriyo uh, the the argument from rahul that this could be a trigger point for others you know you've seen shatrughan sinha rk saying you have these four veterans you have a bhola singh a member of parliament also speaking out that more could follow is that a, is that a matter of concern for you as a bjp member well uh, uh, you know a man should not speculate under two circumstances when he can afford to when he cannot afford to i would not speculate that people are going to uh, take this opportunity and try to uh, you know line them up in the same league as these four veteran uh, icons of the party and would try to try to use this opportunity to say something which they are not entitled to uh, so i i do not want to speculate at this point of time but as i say you can ask me n number of questions but i'm very sure i'm not going to say anything which i'm not entitled to say and i think at a time when the party has faced some kind of a uh, uh, you know as they are saying a resounding defeat i think uh, uh, responsibility and restraint is probably one thing that definitely needs to be practiced amongst all its leaders and if the younger lot or the newcomers or the others have been uh, have been uh, not so liked or have been uh, reprimanded by the party for not having said what they should have said then i think that uh, the rule should apply if, if arun shauri ji is not part of the party which has been categorically been said so therefore it is little embarrassing to know that he is inside mr joshi's uh, house while the letter is being drafted that that is something that i don't say as a bjp minister i say as a narendra modi fan i think that under, i think a man under whose leadership we can really go forward but when we talk about a leader a leader is someone who has won battles and have lost battle for his team that's that's 
That's the preamble. I definitely want the leaders. I respect them. Like I saw Gulaji speaking. As I said, as a father, when the son has lost, probably not doing the right thing before an exam. It's very nice, comforting to have the father's hand behind your back. He will understand his own mistakes himself because they're all responsible people. I, Barka, I don't think I should say any more, but I think that even if you ask me a hundred more questions, I wouldn't say anything that is going to go beyond party life. Okay, but just stay with us anyway, uh, Babal Supriyo, if you can. Let me take ba uh, this back to Ashok and Shekhar. Let's actually logically go through this statement and see, separate from whether this is a revolt or not, whether this statement Shekhar stands on its own merit. Are there some good points being made here? Uh, the principal reason for the Bihar defeat is the way the BJP has been emasculated in the last year. Has the BJP, in your opinion, been emasculated? BJP has been changed. This is The party has never been governed in this way. First of all, the party has never had two key people from the same state. And frankly, with respect to Gujarat, it's not the most politically the most important state in India. Today, it's the most powerful, but it only sends... Which is why Lalu Prasad Yadav is able to mock after the defeat and say, why don't the two of you go back to Gujarat? Well, let's keep Lalu out of it. But the fact is that if you're a BJP person, you will say that, look, I'm not a Gujarati. I'm from outside. Now Gujarat runs my party. I don't believe that even the Congress party was ever run by people from one state, at least for a long time. Uh, that's one. The second thing is the power of the party president has oh. never been, even when Mr. Advani was uh, president, his power wasn't the same. Mr. Mr. Vajpayee had a lot of power still. Other people had a lot of power still. I will tell you something. Uh, just about ten, 15 days back, I had got a call from one of the senior leaders. Maybe I, I'd go so far as to say one from among these. Okay. Who said to me, what's happened to my party? Pakistan chale jao. Hmm. How can we tell anybody who's not voting for us, Pakistan chale jao? Every Indian has yeah. the right to stay in yeah. India and nobody yeah. has the right to tell anybody. He was genuinely upset. And he said that he had also been in the back of the day. So, there was, these are principled differences also. This is... I this is not just about being no, sidelined. I, th I, I think the essential nature of the BJP has been changed. General secretaries have no powers. Hmm. In fact, most of us don't even remember the names of many of them. Why was somebody like Mr. Balyan after Muzaffar Nagar uh, uh, riots, given a position in the ministry. Mm. So, look, this is a complicated situation. Now, I can see uh, sort of RSS sounding so holy, but the fact is that RSS has infiltrated this government as they could never do with Mr. Vajpayee. Uh, this government is uh, the culture minister, the HRD minister, you know. Uh, and yet the RSS is not actually happy necessarily with Mr. Modi. Well, the RSS will very happily pass the buck on to anybody because, because par RSS wants to do backseat driving. RSS, frankly, will have a tough time with a really powerful prime minister. Let me just get Ashok in. Ashok, uh, Remember you... how much trouble they gave Mr. Vajpayee? I do remember that. And yet uh, Vajpayee was able to say that I am an RSS Swayam Sevak with, and yet still be the prime minister who could keep the RSS at a distance. Well, they wanted to turn his son-in-law out. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Ashok, do you think, you know, when, when Shekhar says that, you know, one of these leaders said, what's happening yeah. to my party, another of these leaders on the day of the defeat said, you know, we're going to react, but we're waiting for the defeat to sink in. There is a clear sense within many in the BJP, some of whom are not these four people, that the campaign was miserably run in Bihar. Look, the campaign was miserably run. The decision to make the Prime Minister the front uh, of the, uh, the, 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 the face of the campaign and overexpose him uh, clearly backfired and uh, frankly in retrospect makes absolutely no sense if there was even an iota of doubt that it's going to be such a defeat. Uh, Shekhar is completely right. Uh, um, Mr. Amit Shah has a lot to answer for as party president. He's made the, the party uh, an effective special purpose vehicle for a series of state elections, many of which have been won, some of which have been lost. But uh, the BJP is not a modern political party that uh, uh, the, the, the victory of 2014 should have led to. Uh, there, are, there are problems with many frontal uh, bodies of and organizations associated with the party. That is completely true. Uh, the sharing of power within the various factions of the party uh, and its associates have, have not been what it perhaps should have been. All of that is very uh, valid criticism and uh, uh, after this defeat there has to be some sort of a, a rethink on the on the part of Mr. Amit Shah and Mr. Modi. Rethink uh, on my what? Only, uh, point rethink is, on I what? Don't think these Ashok, four rethink on what? Rethink have... on what? Rethink on what? 
I think the perception that the party is too centrally controlled yes. by uh, a few people uh, would need to be addressed. If many people feel that way, yeah. I think that will need to be rectified to some degree. I just want okay. to... Now, exactly what happens with yeah. whom I can't tell, I don't know. I just want to go but to... I, I, I do believe that this issue of moral authority of these four gentlemen is a bit overstated. Okay. They, while there has to, there will be, I'm um, no doubt, a, a, a rethink within the party and a, 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 a resettlement of factional scores. I think these four gentlemen are going to be rather irrelevant to that purpose, to that cause. Uh, uh, I just Process, want, sorry. I, I'll get Shekhar to respond to that. But Rahul, you are now confirming that uh, that Govind Acharya was was present at this meeting. Rahul. Okay, I thought Rahul was there, but I believe that Rahul has dialed in to say that he was present, uh, Shekhar. Well, first of all, if Govinda Charya ji was present, then remember how the rebellion under Mr. Vajpayee began. It was Mr. Govinda Charya describing Mr. Vajpayee as a mere mukhota. Yeah. What that meant was the reality was the RSS and yeah. the power stayed with them. Yeah. And Mr. Vajpayee spent a lot of time fighting back that mukhota trying to prove he wasn't a mukhota, although privately he did admit mm. that it wasn't wrong. I think if Govinda Charya is present, then this is Mr. Modi's Mukhata moment. He will have to fight back. I think how important these people are, these four people are, I agree with Ashok Malik, they may not count for very much, but they now symbolize a revolt. Look, this is not a party, this is a very different party from what it used to be. You saw those hoardings in Bihar. Every hoarding had portraits of Mr. Modi and Mr. Amit Shah, almost in the same size. Hmm. So people within the government, Sushma Swaraj, Rajnath Singh, they've all taken uh, uh, Vasundra Raj. A lot of people said, why was Amit Shah on no, the no, posters? No, no, Vasundra Raj, Shivraj Singh, yeah. Raman Singh, these are people who've got 100% seats in their seats. Sorry, Shekhar, I have to interrupt. I'll tell you why, because Naresh Gujral's on the line, and the perspective from the allies is also interesting. Uh, Naresh, as an ally, do you... S how do you see these developments? You were one of the first people to actually express disappointment at some of the Hindutva rhetoric, the beef politics uh, that had actually returned to the BJP discourse, which was used in Bihar as well. You know, whether and, and this whole business of firecrackers going off in Pakistan comment made by Amit Shah. How do you see this statement by the four veterans of the BJP? Barker, quite frankly, this is an inner party affair, and we don't want to comment on their inner party affairs. Uh, as far as the other question is concerned, we condemned uh, all those, uh, uh, I, would, I would use the word, uh, stupid people in, in, in the, the fringe of the Parivar who were trying to create a rift uh, between communities. Hmm. And we did not mince any words there. But you know, Naresh, you're calling them the fringe. But I mean, when uh, one was a one was a minister, one was a general secretary who wanted Shah Rukh Khan, for example, to go back to Pakistan. One is a seven-time MP, uh, the Minorities Affairs Minister, Rajma Hatullah, defended culture, those remarks. Culture minister. Culture minister, Mahesh Sharma. It was well, the BJ, I, I, BJP I, I, party I, president I, who spoke about firecrackers in Pakistan. How is this the fringe? Barkha, I must admit, after we spoke, then the next day. Yes. Uh, they were all summoned to Delhi. They were all given a dressing down. Yes. So we are, we are satisfied that I'm sure going forward, more action would be taken against such people. As an ally, how do you see how the Bihar campaign was run and the rhetoric the, the, on the eve of the polls that, uh, you know, cow ads, cow politics, you know, somebody joked saying it was a battle be between Cautilia and Cautilia and, you know, we know who won and who lost. No, I, I, said, I said earlier, this is their own affair. We don't want to comment on that. And as far as we are concerned, we, we are a, a minority party and for us, we hold secularism very dear to our heart. But if you hold secularism very dear to your heart as a minority party, do you agree with the statement by the BJP party president that if the BJP loses in Bihar, firecrackers will be burst in Pakistan? I think these things are said in the heat of the moment. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you're making a public speech, it's, it's a slip of a tongue. So I, don't, I wouldn't attribute much to it. Naresh, uh, speak as, a, as an ally who has representation in this government. Today, this government would have wanted the headlines to be about the FDI reforms that it announced. Those FDI reforms have taken a back seat and look at what's on the headlines instead. Isn't this a matter of concern for a party that's also a partner in government? Well, obviously, everybody is, is, is concerned. 
But as I said, it's a mature party. They have inner party democracy, and I'm sure they'll resolve the matter very amicably. What would you, many of these people are your, are your friends, you've known them for years, what would you advise the BJP at this point? I don't even advise my family, so I'll stay <laughs> out of it. All right, Naresh, thank you for those comments. Babul Supriya, are you still with us? If you'd like to uh, come back in, is there anything that LK Advani, Murli Joshi, Shanta Kumar, Yashwant Sinha have said that you agree with? For example, let me give you a sentence. The review of the defeat must not be done by the very persons who manage the election. This seems like a fair point. Like I don't want to make any more uh, statements. I don't really want, I really do not actually, don't want to actually refer to, uh, to the statements made today. But I'm very sad about the fact, something that he just said, that the 15, uh, you know, uh, the 15 announcements about FTI is a very important day for India. And, uh, for, you know, uh, that, that probably has taken a back seat, one. And secondly, I really do not know why people are saying that, why is Modi's uh, picture up there in the posters and all the posters and stuff. I just, I just make a, you know, as I give some cricketing examples, I come from Bollywood. I mean, if I make a film which stars Shah Rukh Khan, Kajol, and I also have Manishankar Ayer as the, you know, as the heroine's, uh, uh, you know, father. I have a lot of nice debates with him. So, I mean, will I go and send Manishankar Ayer to promote the film? I'll send the lead actor, which is Shah Rukh Khan. So very simple, if the, if the face of the party is Modiji, he's the one who is probably going to promote the, the film of New India INC. He's the one who's representing the country for in foreign country, in foreign lands. And he's the one who has also represented DJP in Tihar. A lot of things are being said on hindsight. This is definitely not the time where you shut down a TV and watch a film in the evening. It is a time when you actually sit down and watch and shuffle through every channel and hear every every uh, war veteran or every uh, poll uh, uh, you know, expert speak and probably take a few things, uh, a few advices as it as it as it's been thrown to you, as it's thrown to any party was lost, and then do this uh, needed soul searching inside the dressing room. Okay, uh, Shekhar, is there? You know, I think where the divergence seems to be is how seriously these comments will be taken. And you continue to believe a moral authority, which Ashok is questioning. Well, moral authority because of the mood in the party and because of the state the party is in. I'll go back to what I was saying. Look at these portrait. Look, look at these holdings. The only time I have seen such holdings in BJP's history is when you had Mr. Vajpayee and Mr. Advani sharing that space. Hmm. That space. Now, you can say that Mr. Modi's stature today is higher than Mr. Vajpayee's because he's won an election with a full majority on his own. But really, I mean, uh, can you put Amit Shah, if you're a BJP person, can you put Amit Shah in the same category as an automatic number two to Mr. Modi? Now, this is something, this is something that Shivraj Singh Chauhan, uh, Vasundra Rajay, Raman Singh, uh, uh, Sushma Swaraj, Rajnath Singh, Nitin Gadkari have all been watching. So what these four old people say, I suspect is also echoing some of, those, some, some of that point of view. Because BJP was a much more, much more fairly managed party, much more democratically managed party. Yeah. Uh, and I think many of them have a, have a point of view too. So these four may just be people go out in front. Uh, old people, expendable, nothing to lose, right? Uh, but they are or speaking... Or they could be reflecting something. No, they are, I mean, they are speaking on behalf of many others. There's been a seething resentment in the party. There's been a seething resentment party also with the talent in this cabinet that, uh, that, the, that the government, the party has not drawn on as much talent it could have accessed. There is also resentment on the strength and quality of the prime minister's office. There is also, frankly, resentment. This is a this is this is real life uh, resentment on the kind of profile that the prime minister gets compared to others that they can do nothing about. Yeah. So definitely, they can't attack the prime minister. I think uh, the idea that two both should be from the same state will become a convenient tool in the hands of those uh, who disagree but don't have the courage to speak. So these four have spoken because they have nothing to do. Ashok, uh, did you, you, you heard Rahul arguing uh, that this could be a trigger for others. Do you believe that that is the case, that there is a reflection of a seething resentment here, that it's no longer about Advani getting a chance to be Prime Minister or Arun Shori being angry that he's not a minister. I mean, Arun Shori's name is not, I have to say again and again, is not on this paper and nor is Govindacharya, but both of them were present. What is the import 
of today. If you believe that these are yesterday's people, what is the import of what's happened today? To me, one big import is there's no headline on FDI reforms. No, certainly. That's taken away the, the Diwali Dhamaka, as it were. No, look, Shekhar has a number of points about uh, the way the party's been run in the past year, the centralization of decision making, the lack of uh, talent in the government, uh, the fact that uh, this government, after one and a half years of a big victory, today seems, uh, in some respects, a weak government after this defeat in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Bihar and, frankly, a certain underperformance in PA. So all of those are, are, are is criticism well taken and uh, I expect some of the others in the party who are still relevant, still in the game, will not come out in the open but would like to bargain for more position, for more space, political space hmm. within especially the party organization. Uh, and yes, Amit Shah's uh, second term will be a long drawn negotiated process if it happens at all. However. The broader picture is this, Mr. Modi is the leader of the party till 2019. He's going to lead the party in 2019 most likely into another election. If he wins that election, he's Prime Minister in 2024. Yeah. If he loses that election, the BJP is lost and the BJP is out of power till 2024. Hmm. I think this generation, the Modi, Modi, Jaitley, Rajnath, Sushma, Gadkari generation uh, is left with just one possible Prime Minister, Modi. And the, the BJP's real uh, sex, you know, succession plan comes into effect from 2023 or 2024, which is why I'm saying uh, much of what we're seeing today is great headlines, but in the long term, not that relevant. And but, but it, it can lead to tactical changes, which will are important. But you're actually needed, saying you're not actually, strategic. Ones. You're actually saying that there is no leadership available, but as Modi, that sounds that makes the BJP sound like the Congress when they say we have nobody but the Gandhis. That actually makes the BJP no, 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 sound no, 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 like I'm not a very that different not party from the, what Mr. It used Modi to be. has won a big. Ma no, 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 no. One sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Barka, let me make myself very clear. Mr. Modi has earned his leadership by winning a big mandate. He is obviously there till 2019. As the incumbent, I expect he will lead the party in 2019. He may win. He may lose. I don't know. But if he loses, obviously the BJP is lost. So then the BJP is not in the game for the next no, five but years. What, but, 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 what means, but, but, but what your formulation assumes so is... So in effect... Ashok, you're assuming there that in 2019, Mr. Modi will by definition be the prime ministerial candidate for the next election. And I am arguing that that's a very Gandhi's is to Congress when Modi is to BJP. I, Though, of I course, Modi is self-made and Gandhi is inherited. I think, frankly, I'll agree with uh, Ashok. Ashok. This is a reasonable presumption. Because I unless, know, I know. I'm just uh, arguing from the other something side. Unless something catastrophic yeah. happens, you don't go to a second election with another candidate yeah. or without any candidate. True. Frankly, after what BJP has seen in Bihar, I don't think they'll go to one more election without a candidate. Right? So, I don't see them changing horses in midstream. Uh, politics can take its own course, but we really haven't seen it happen with a major political party in India. Narsi Rao had a lot of re revolt, it wasn't changed. Manmohan Singh, there was a lot of, spe lot of Sorry, speculation. Sorry, just, 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 I've got Randeep uh, Surjewala of the Congress, clearly uh, uh, sort of a moment for them to enjoy this, but not necessarily do much else. It doesn't change the big political picture. I think we have to say that. Randeep, uh, brief comments from you. Well, uh, Barkha, there is, I don't think so, we need to enjoy that. The truth is that the suffocation of BJP's Mark Darshak Mandal mm. reaffirms what the entire country knew all along. And that is, that is that our nation is caught up in a personality cult where one individual has become bigger than 100. But Andhra Gandhi is also people. a personality cult. Uh, isn't your party also defined by a personality cult? I, I heard what Ashok uh, was just saying, but yes. may I respectfully say, when Gandhis win election and get electorally, uh, become electorally the leaders of this country, they are a personality cult. But when Mr. Modi does the same thing, then he is not. Why these double standards? And democracy, Barka has no place for the word I. Yes. Because democracy, the very meaning of it is in, uh, lies in we. But Mr. Modi's <coughs> brand style is one-way communication. He does monkey bath of his own, but listens to no one. I'm not concerned about that. As a political party, what is important is the net consequences. There is a policy paralysis, there is a decision paralysis, okay. and there is a delegation paralysis in this country. 
That's why our country is I, suffering in the process. I have to leave. I have to leave it there. Uh, Shekhar Gupta, Ashok Malik, and uh, Randeep Sojewala. Thank you so much for joining us. On the other side, Rahul Shivasa with the very latest on how the BJP uh, is actually reacting to these developments. We'll be back in a moment from now. Welcome back to the Buck Stops here, the very latest from Rahul Srivastava outside Murli Manohar Joshi's residence where the old guard of the BJP, Murli Manohar Joshi, Shanta Kumar, LK Advani, Yashwan Sinha, aided by Arun Shori and Kane Govindacharya have written a statement of virtual revolt against the new BJP led by Narendra Modi and Amit Shah with perhaps the BJP party president Amit Shah being their key target. Rahul, any more details? What is the BJP saying? You know, we had Babul Supriyo on the show, but all he's saying is these are not statements that should be made in public. What is the BJP saying? Barka, initially we were told by the BJP top leaders, I spoke to three, four of them, and they were saying that the BJP will not like to get into <coughs> a, 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 a duel between, uh, with these uh, leaders who have written this, issued this statement. But what we are hearing now that Mr. Amit Shah, who is in Ahmedabad, has been on the phone, and though unconfirmed, it is being said, Mr. Amit Shah and Mr. Uh, Narendra Modi have spoken, and a short statement from the BJP is likely very soon. What top sources are also saying that perhaps using Bihar verdict, uh, there is a, the, the leaders who gathered here and issued a statement, the old guard in the BJP, which was sidelined over the last few years, is one fighting for space and also sensing an opportunity that it is at this moment, if an unrest is created against Amit Shah and Amit Shah's second term as, for, as president, is, uh, is doubtful, then the whole Prime Minister Narendra Modi has over the party and the government can be weakened. And that is why it is being perceived as an attempt to destabilize the present dispensation. And uh, what sources are saying, that uh, that is why top leaders are already on phone with district level leaders, with state level leaders, to ensure that members of parliament, state level leaders, do not join the, the rebellion as readily as they would yeah. have otherwise. Okay. So some kind of a damage control exercise is going on. All right, Rahul, we'll wait for that BGP official statement. So far, individual leaders not saying very much at all. I think uh, taken aback, though, in many ways, Rahul, for those of us who follow politics, this is almost playing to script. The Bihar defeat, before that, the Delhi defeat, opened the space for this. Rahul Srivastava, thank you very much. At 10 p.m., we'll be back with the latest developments on this big political story.